The Mid-Market Institute, the hub for mid-sized companies, suppliers, and advisors worldwide. Welcome uh, to the Mid-Market Institute. I'm Ram Vyayar, founder and president of the Mid-Market Institute. We're here in Chicago with uh, Mike Knoll, who is the founder of the Alliance of Mergers and Acquisitions Advisors, AMAA, which is the largest association of uh, M&A advisors who focus entirely on the mid-market. Uh, you could very well call it the Mid-Market M&A Alliance. Uh, Mike has been working with mid-market companies and a huge amount with mid-market advisors for many, many years. And he knows a lot about mid-market companies and the M&A space. So, Mike, welcome. Thank you, Ram. It's a delight to be here and uh, look forward to sharing some thoughts with you about the middle market. We, we certainly admire all that you're doing. In, in many cases, um, uh, some of these mid-market companies are seeing the context, the economy around them change so drastically. Because, see, like mid-market companies live in niches. Mid-market companies tend to be number three, number four, number five players. They tend to have, they tend to rely on a few large customers, sometimes one or two or three, for most of their revenue. Exactly. All it takes is you get a call from John and say, Mike, uh, I'm glad you guys served us for 20 years, but we've had to prune our supplier base and you're gone. We had one uh, substantial company not long ago, Machine Tool Shop, with over 90% of its business with one large uh, publicly traded company. That, as you've said, is, is not an unusual situation. They, they live in niches. Yeah, so that's happened. So now, so, so two very basic things that come to mind. One is, you're dealing with a new reality and remember, a lot of uh, what we've seen in the U.S. economy for many years is predictability. Not that it's predictable all the time, but it's been relatively predictable as opposed to the level of ambiguity we see now. See, now the thing is, a lot of people have opinions, but if you go and ask people, nobody has a clear thing about, I think this is where it's going to go, right? Most people say, I'm not sure. So this ambiguity requires a very different kind of leadership, very different kind of operational focus. Uh, what are you hearing from your members? Are they seeing that kind of stuff, uh, those kind of skills resident in mid-market companies? Well, I think that's part of the reason why private company owners are attracted to the private equity community. You know, the, the, the world of private equity is a relatively new asset class. When, uh, when we were first starting the Alliance of M&A Advisors 12 years ago, there were relatively few private equity groups. There's, there's been a, uh, an extraordinary increase in that asset class in the last 10 or 12 years. And that's part of the reason uh, for that, that growth is because historically the returns have been very attractive because private equity partners will add substantial value. They can help to professionalize the management team, make acquisitions, build strategic alliances. We believe the private equity community is much aligned in the, the public press. So much of the, uh, the, the, the general press will focus on the, the larger buyout groups, uh, KKR, etc. That's not our league. They are uh, clearly working with multi-billion dollar public transactions. Most of our activity is going to be in the middle market, particularly the lower middle market. We track some 300,000 private companies just in the U.S. with sales between five and 500 million. So that, uh, that's a very, very much a, an overlooked marketplace. Generally, the, the, the business schools in the U.S. have not spent a great deal of time and effort on that particular sector. And for many, it's been somewhat of a, an overlooked, the American Bar Association calls it the gray market, because it, it's that space that's below the radar screen for the, 
the larger bulge bracket investment banking That's firms. That's exactly the issue with the bid market. Yeah. It's not large enough to be <laughs> you know, garner the kind of attention that a big company does, but not too small that you can you know, give it smother it with attention like you do a baby. Well, that, that's why we think the work you're doing to identify resources and thought leaders and, and provide information and education in this overlooked sector, we believe that is, is so very important and we support it in any way because we find that for many owners and managers, this is not something they learn in business school. Uh, it's simply a, uh, uh, you, you learn best from those who've done it, either as a, a business owner, entrepreneur, or an experienced business advisor, a transaction specialist. But it's not something that comes to one instinctively, and it's not taught in school. So the only way to be able to get the help that one needs is to rely on another professional, another person who's been there and done that. See, one of the things that also strikes me when I see the context changing and uh, many mid-market companies struggling and you know many have gone out of business because they haven't been able to adapt to this one big customer disappearing and a bunch of issues and you know, credit issues, you know, there's a long list of things. I wonder perhaps uh, in your uh, conversations with the M&A advisors if maybe it is now a good time for the senior most people in some of these privately owned mid-market companies to step aside and allow the next uh, generation of leaders to step in because this now requires fresh thinking. Because see, the way we all work, I'm going to rely on my experience. My experience comes from the mistakes I made in the past. The mistakes I made in the past were in a context that doesn't exist anymore. So some of those lessons that I bring forward are not relevant to the current context. You're right. It's, it's a whole new game, and it may be time to let the next generation or a new management team take over. Lots of reasons why now offers opportunity. One of the things we know for sure, the capital gains tax rate is increasing January 1st of 2011. Uh, it's going up again January 1st of 2013. Uh, so you'll, you'll find that with increasing uh, the, uh, taxes, both at, at the federal and probably the state level, uh, certainly that adds another element to this whole mix. But part of it is, uh, I think, really being able to understand the business potential and make a, a, a sincere and objective assessment as to whether or not when the economy returns, will your business return, or as we've just talked, maybe it, it's time to shift gears. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, one of your members, uh, Bill Haas, who is the former uh, chairman of the Turnaround Management Association, uh, often talks about, Ram, private equity can help mid-market companies. Private equity uh, firms can help turn the economy around. How, how can PE firms help in a way that uh, both helps mid-market companies and the economy? I mean, is that, is that a well, I, th I think that's a very accurate observation. And, and Bill and, uh, and Shep, they've, uh, working with Dr. Laffer, they have documented how private equity builds value. We've seen it in example after example in uh, over the, the past 12 years. And it, it, it's very logical. One of the reasons we know that private middle market companies have not been able to grow is access to capital. Frequently, in order to grow, it requires a, a personal guarantee. That level of, of risk might be something that an owner is comfortable with early in the career, but as one ages, no longer is one willing to bet the farm for needed capital to grow, be it new plant, equipment, even people. Uh, 
So the risk profile changes as one gets older. This is a real advantage with the private equity community in structuring a recapitalization of the business. It really does allow a private owner who might want to hedge his bet to be able to enjoy liquidity today for a substantial mar amount of the value that's been accumulated, while at the same time now adding a true equity partner with resources and people to help grow and take it Capital. to the next level, yeah. giving that owner a second bite of the apple at the time that, uh, uh, in the time frame that he or she may choose. So there's a, uh, again, we believe that this, uh, the, the value add with the private equity community is extraordinary. Uh, again, it depends too upon the nature of the private equity group. There are now so many different private equity sources. You really want to take your time and do the, the due diligence, the homework, to make sure that the track record of the people you're working with would be in line with your personal needs and objectives. Mm -hmm. Good, Mike, I, I greatly, greatly appreciate your time. It's always fun to talk to you, always interesting to talk to you. A thrill, Ram. <laughs> I, uh, I, I like what you're doing, and we'll continue to support the Mid-Market Institute for years to come. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for joining us. Uh, we've been speaking with Mike Knoll, who is the head of AMAA, the world's largest association of M&A advisors that focuses entirely on the mid-market. Uh, I'm Ram Viyayar, founder and president of the Mid-Market Institute. Thank you.